All right, so ladies and gentlemen, today uh, we're going to be talking about the lengths of secants and chords. All right, the difference between a secant and a chord is very sim is very subtle. All right, a secant leaves the circle, whereas a chord only lives with inside, the, um, inside the circle, from edge to edge. And remember, tangents, which we're not going to be, well, we will see some examples of them today, but uh, I just want to talk about these quickly. This is a chord, a secant. and a tangent. Okay. You can always remember a chord. When I, th when I think about a chord, uh, the first thing that usually comes to my mind is the uh, when you play multiple notes in music at the same time. You know, or, you know, if, you, if anybody here plays guitar or a stringed instrument, um, I think about it as, you know, the plucking of a string because it's clamped at both ends. You know, just like a, a musical instrument string is clamped at one end and clamped at the other, and then you pluck the string, this chord right here, you know, you could imagine as being like plucking of the string. So um, that's one mental trick to try and remember what they are. Okay. Now, um, we're going to, you're going to be on the boards today for two problem sets, just like the other day. Okay. Um, I want to go, the first problem set is pretty straightforward. A little algebra involved, but nothing too bad. Uh, second problem set, a little bit more of an interpretation of the problem. You've got to figure out how does, you know, what, what are the parts that I need in my diagram. Okay, so there's a little bit more brain power in the second problem set, but nothing too bad. Okay. All right, now let's, um, let's talk about these, for example. All right. I'm um, just going to throw another uh, word, a couple of words at you. Um, if something is in, well, let's, let's get a little smaller here. Hold on. If something is inscribed, okay, something that's inscribed is something that is written inside. You know, the word scribe, we've all seen that before. Okay, to, um, a scribe is somebody who writes, okay? If you scribble, you're writing, okay? Um, and you're, you're writing in the shape, okay? Um, so, for example, this would be an inscribed quadrilateral, okay? The quadrilateral written inside the circle, okay? If that makes sense? And then we have circumscribed okay Magellan was the explorer who circumnavigated the globe he went all the way around the globe okay a circumscribed polygon would be a polygon that's written outside of the shape Okay, so we have inscribed and circumscribed, to write in and to write out, you can, or write around, okay? All right, these vocabulary terms are going to pop up from time to time, um, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be talking about them in just a minute when I talk to you about how these formulas and things come about. Okay, so take a minute and copy those pictures. So these are all tangents, you see, where it's all touching at only one point. See how all of those are tangents. 
We're only touching at one spot. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens when I draw a familiar, a familiar diagram from the other day. We looked at problems that looked like this the other day, didn't we? Okay. Okay, and we dealt with the angles and the arcs, and there was formula for that, right? Okay. Well, now we're not interested in the angles and the arcs, but instead we're interested in looking at how long those segments are. Okay. Please, because this is the kind of problem you're going to be working on today. Okay, so let's call this A, B, and C, and D. We have those four line segments coming off of that vertex right there. Okay, so are these chords or secants or tangents, by the way? These are, all, these are both chords, okay? All right. So, what's kind of cool, you don't have to do this for every problem, but I just wanted to show you where these formulas come from, okay? Um, if we take a look and draw, like I said, you don't have to do this, because this is where the formula comes from. So, you know, one thing to be given a formula and just say, hey, you know, this just popped out of the clouds and, you know, came down from Jack's Beanstalk or whatever, you know I mean? It's not magic. These formulas don't come out of nowhere. If we turn this into two triangles, okay, these guys actually, we actually can prove that these are two similar triangles gum. So first of all, we know that those angles are vertical. That's free, right? Now, all I really, remember, what are the, remember the methods to prove similar triangles? There were three of them, right? Do you remember what they were? They, they, they were kind of like the congruent triangle ones. Remember, we had angles and sides and sides and angles. And remember those three? Which ones were for, were for similar? There were three. Side, angle, side was one. Angle, angle. And what was the last one? Do you guys remember? Side, side, side. Those were the three formulas that, I'm sorry, the three theorems we used to prove similar triangles. Okay. Well, I don't know anything about their lengths right now. But I know one is three. If you remember in the uh, two classes ago when we did the two diagrams at the top of that problem set, remember this picture? Okay, you remember this picture in your notes? Okay, this is where this whole unit comes from. Okay, when when I was explaining to you how to do this problem type, okay, I explained to you that if you have circle, and you have an going off to it. Whatever this is, you double it to go out, right? To go out to that ang to that arc, remember? Whatever that angle was, you doubled it when you went out to the arc. Okay? So let's call this, you know, x. This would be 2x, right? And if there was another, I explained, I, I'm sure I talked to you about this. And if there was another angle that also went out, okay, it would be how big? If this is 2x, how big is that? What do we do to go from an arc in? Divide by 2. So, you know, we, to go from the angle out, we multiply by 2. To go from the arc in, we divide by 2. So these two angles are the same angle because they both go to the same arc. Okay? We talked about this. Do you remember? Okay. Well, if we take a look at this arc for a second. See that arc? 
I have two angles that go to that arc. I've got this angle, and I've got this angle. You see them? So both of those angles are the same. Okay? Oops. So if those two angles are the same, that means that these two triangles are similar, which means their parts are proportional. Okay. And what we have is this. A over D would be equal to what? Right. Good. B over C. And if we cross multiplied, AC equals BD. So if we look at this triangle, uh, sorry, if we look at this original diagram, it's this times this equals this times that. That's how we solve these. We just multiply along the chord and we set it equal to what happens if we multiply along the other chord. Okay. So let's take a look at an example and we'll see what happens. All right. This is pretty pretty straightforward. 9 and x 4 and 6. So take a second and do this one, and you can find out what this guy, what x equals. Take a minute and try it. Don't yell it out. Have you found X? All right. So everybody, what did we get? X equals? Good. Good. It's 9 times 4 equals 6 times X. So... 9 times 4 is 36, equals 6x, divide by 6, x equals 6. Not too bad. Um, yes, you can do that also. There, yeah, there's more than one way to do this. But that you can go back to the similar triangles principle if you want to. So let's do another one. Take a second and give it a shot. Watch your distributions. Where the biggest set of problems is going to show up. Bless you.
Don't shout it out. No, you're good. Bless you. All right, so let's set it up. Seven times what? Good, x plus six, very good. Equals, right? Now we just distribute, move, combine, divide. Seven x plus 42. 8x plus 32, and now we just move everybody around, okay? So, we get 42 minus 32 equals 8x minus 7x. So, I just moved the 7x over to the other side to again, exchange signs, and I moved the 32 over to the other side and exchanged signs. Okay, it's a quick and easy way to do the algebra. So now we get 10 equals x. And that's how that one's done. Okay. All right, cool. We good on this? You feel, feel all right about it? Yeah, this one is pretty quick. This one doesn't take too much. Um, all right, so now let's do the other type. Those were chords now, right? Because they were all inside the circle. Now we're going to play with secants. Secants. Yeah, no, secant is... Um, it's kind of like pronounced like that, secant. Yeah. How you would pronounce those two words, but put together. All right. All right, before I just jump right in and tell you what these formulas are, what this formula is, I'm going to kind of explain to you where it comes from, okay? Again, this comes back down to similar triangles, all right? So, like I said, you don't have to copy this process down, and you certainly don't need to do it every time. But I just want to show you where it comes from, so you're not looking at me and saying, uh, you know, math magic. All right. No. All right. So I'm going to look at this. Now, in both of these diagrams, this angle is definitely the same. Yes, that's the reflexive property because it's truly the same diagram. Okay. Now, you can see that both of those angles there, this angle here and this angle here, both go out and hit the same arc. They both touch the circle to form that arc. Okay. There's a fancy word for that. It's called... Um, to subtend when an angle subtends an arc, it means it goes out and touches and makes an arc. It's, uh, it's a fancy word. Subtend. But just if you ever hear me use the word, you know what it means. It's the angle that goes out and touches the arc and it makes, it defines the arc. Okay, it says, hey, I'm talking about this arc because I'm coming from this angle. Well, just from before, a minute ago, I said if these two angles both touch the same arc, that these two are the same. So what we have are two triangles that are similar to each other by angle angle okay so who cares good question <laughs> all right what that what this means is is that 
I can relate the lengths of these segments together. All right. Let's call them A, B, C, D. All right, now we need to start right copying the diagram down. Okay, the top two ones you didn't need to worry about. Okay. Yes, sir. Subtend means um, uh, the angle subtends an arc when it goes out and touches the circle. Okay. That's what, it's a verb, to subtend. The angle subtends an arc. It, it defines it. It says, I start here and kind of thing. All right. Please. All right, so we're going to go back up to this for just a moment. Take a look. All right, so if these two green triangles are similar, if I said this side over that side, what would, how could I write that? B over what? C, C times D? Mm -mm. It's the length. Oh. C plus D, good. Okay. Mm -mm, this is the formula. And now we're going to get to the formula in a second. Hold your horses. Would equal D over what? Mm -hmm. Right. A, A plus B. Hold on. Chill. Hey. Pay attention. So, so this is the formula that we're going to use as soon as I cross multiply. All right. This is the formula that we're going to use. Now, let's do a couple examples so you know what I'm talking about. But if we look at this and we visualize what it means, I'm saying to you this. B, the length of that, times the length of that. equals this times that. So outside times the whole length equals outside times the whole length. When we do a couple examples, it'll start to show up itself a little bit more clearly. Um, maybe. Okay. So first, copy this down. Oh, wrong one.
So, gentlemen. So, what we have is the outside times the entire length. How long is that? And then the outside times the length of that, which is x plus 8. So we can simplify, multiply, distribute, and solve. So 7 times 16 equals 8x. Don't forget to distribute 64, gentlemen. Okay. 7 times 16 uh, is 116. No, 100, 112, excuse me. Yeah. Because I don't need to distribute. I can just add 7 plus 9. 7 plus 9 is 16, right? No need to distribute. Okay. Now we subtract 64 from both sides. Forty-eight. And there we go. Come. All right, let's do one more. Maybe two. And then you guys are going to go to the boards. Is there a different form for the tangent? Okay. We're going to get we're going to do that in, after this example. We'll do that we'll do that example in a minute. Alright, so take a minute and set this one up, if you can put this thing together. All right. So, this is how I set mine up. That's how it started. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and simplify this right-hand side a little bit before we distribute. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute and combine. Okay. Right. 9 plus 3 is 12. And now we distribute there too. And the rest is algebra. Nine times twelve is one hundred. So now we move everybody around.
There was a little bit more to that one. But it was really just algebra. Lots of straightforward algebra there. OK. So take a look at it and see if you make sure, make sure you understand where I got them all. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, a plus b is b plus a. So, you know, it's commutative. Doesn't matter. It's commutative. Sir? Shh. Can't hear the man. What was your question for? Two x plus three and what? I did. I did add them. Yeah, I, I, I wrote out on the first step where my pieces came from. And then I combine my like terms in this step there. And then I distribute. And then I moved and solved. OK? All right. Last, one, last example we have looks a little weird. That's why I want to show it to you clearly. OK? This is the example with a tangent. These formulas are not on the formula sheet for um, geometry, for the geometry SOL. You have to know your formulas. OK. Um, I don't believe that there is flag for review anymore. I'm almost 100% certain. Last year, I'm sure, well, no. I'm going to have to ask because I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm, I want to say like 90% chance that the flag for review is not on there anymore. But you can always write down the problem on your scratch work, you know, and remember to go back. All right. So OK, ladies and gentlemen, please. OK. In this segment right here that only touches on one point, it's a tangent, right? If it was a secant, it would be 18 times the sum of these two parts. But this inside piece, as we go closer and closer to becoming a tangent, that inside piece gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see it. As I go, it's getting tinier and tinier, right? The part that's inside the circle. It starts off as a big piece inside the circle, and then as I walk around and get to a tangent, the inside piece goes away. Right? So according to my formula, what I'll be dealing with is, well, 12 plus 12 plus x. No, sorry, 12 times 12 plus x equals the outside times what? 18. But what's on the inside? Mm, I'm just looking at this segment here. 18 is on the outside. And then I'm going to multiply it to the outside plus the inside. But what's the inside? Hmm? Say it. Zero, right. There's no, the length inside the circle is zero. Okay. When I go to a tangent, the inside part is gone. Which now we've basically got that, and we don't, you know, anything plus zero is itself. So this is just 18 times 18. Okay. Yeah, that one's a little weird. We distribute. And 18 times 18, uh, 3, 2, 4, 324. 
equals one eight zero. X equals fifteen. How do we feel? The first one is very straightforward. The second one requires a few more thinking steps. Okay. You have to remember how these segments all interact. So, in outside times the whole length equals outside times the whole length. All right, so you guys are going to go to the boards. You have two sets to work on. This episode of The Ronco Show has been brought to you by Seekins, Chords, and Tangents. <laughs>